This is MTG Burgeoning, and in this video we are going to update and upgrade our Edgar Markov Vampire Tribal EDH deck. Thank you for joining us for another installment of the Up and Up series. Today we've got six cards going into Edgar and six cards coming out. So let's go right to it and get the first card that's going in. It is a vampire. It is the Dusk Legion Sergeant. Here we have a 2-2 vampire soldier with menace for one and one black mana. We can pay one and a black mana and sacrifice this vampire soldier to have each non-token vampire we control gain persist until end of turn. A creature that has persist means that when it dies, if it had no minus one minus one counters on it, we return it to the battlefield under its owner's control with the minus one minus one counter on it. Now, keeping in mind that there is a sub-theme of plus one plus one counters in this build, which would make it very, very easy to get those minus one minus one counters off, and of course, because we're in the appropriate colors, we can bring the Dusk Legion Sergeant back from our graveyard very, very easily. This could be an extraordinarily frustrating thing for our opponents, and very, very versatile for us because of the resiliency of our vampires keep coming back, which generally for tribal builds such as Edgar Markov is usually a detriment. So with the Dusk Legion Sergeant going in and its ability to help out the entire team, which you're going to see as a common theme throughout this video, team building... With that guy going in, this is coming out. It is the Gifted Aetherborn. Notice the mana value of two black. It is still just two mana. We had a two mana vampire going in and a two mana vampire coming out, except this Aetherborn vampire here, with its two three body and death touching life linking abilities, does nothing to help the team. So we're taking out a an independent vampire and putting in one that helps to build the team. Edgar Markov approves. All right, next card going in is another vampire. Here we have the Charismatic Conqueror. We have another vampire soldier. It's a 2-2 with Vigilance for 1-1 one one white mana. And whenever an artifact or a creature enters the battlefield untapped and under an opponent's control, they may tap that permanent. If they don't, then we create a 1-1 one one white vampire creature token with lifelink. This will hopefully help to slow down their mana rocks. This will hopefully help to tap down their potential blocks blockers for our vampires, and if they choose not to tap them, well then we just advance our board state even further by creating 1-1 one, one white vampire creature tokens with lifelink. With this team building creature going into the deck, coming out is going to be the Vampire Hex Mage. Again, notice the mana value, two black, so it's still two mana versus two mana, except this Vampire Shaman is a 2-1 with first strike that we can sacrifice to remove all counters from target permanents. Yes, we could use that to get rid of some Planeswalkers and some other problematic permanents on the battlefield, but let's face it, in a vacuum when we're talking about team building for our vampires, the Charismatic Conqueror is going to trump the Vampire Hex Mage each and every time. All right, card number three going into this Edgar deck. It is the Markov Baron. Here we have a Vampire Noble for 2-2 two, two with lifelink, and it only costs two and one black mana. It gives other vampire creatures we control plus one, plus one, plus it has the Convoke mechanic, which means that we can tap our creatures to help cast the spell. Each creature we tap, pay, or each creature we tap pays for one colorless mana, or one mana of that creature's color. So it's very, very feasible to cast Markov Baron without tapping any of our mana. It also has a madness cost of two and a black mana if for some reason we are discarding the Baron here and we can pay for it anyways with the two and the black mana. All right, with the Markov Baron acting as a lord going into the deck, coming out of the deck it is... The Nighthawk Scavenger here. Notice again, we have another mana value of three going in and another mana value of three coming out. Here we have a Vampire Rogue that has Flying, Death Touch, and Lifelink. And Nighthawk Scavenger's power is equal to one plus the number of card types among cards in our opponent's graveyards. A very, very nice offensive threat by itself and a particularly useful defensive threat. However, as we're preaching team building as it comes to this video, it's not doing much for our team. The Baron does. Does, the scavenger doesn't, and that's why we're swapping one in and swapping out the other. 
card number four, we're going to the Vampire Well once again with Alenda's Hierophant. Here we have a Vampire Cleric with Flying that has a body of 1-1 one, one for 2 and 1 white mana. Whenever we gain life, we put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Alenda's Hierophant, and we do have a lifelink sub-theme built into this Vampire Tribal deck. And when Alenda's Hierophant dies, we create X 1-1 one, one white Vampire Creature Tokens with lifelink, where X is its power. This could get out of hand very, very quickly, particularly because of the number of sacrifice outlets we have in the deck already. We can really potentially one shot an opponent with Alenda's Hierophant, and if one of our opponents decides to destroy her, well, we're going to populate our side of the battlefield with 1-1 one, one white vampire creature tokens with lifelink. Please note that populate is not the mechanic in this instance, just saying how much we're going to inundate our side of the battlefield with our preferred creature token. All right, with Alenda's Hierophant and its potential to create many, many tokens going into the deck, coming out is... Felice the Fang of Silver Quill. Here we are actually saving on the mana. We're taking out a mana value of four for a mana value, mana value of three. They both fly. Felisa here is a 3-2 with the Mentor ability. And that means that whenever she were to attack, we would put a plus one plus one counter on a target creature with a, t a target attacking creature with lesser power. And whenever a non-token creature we control dies, if it had counters on it, we would have created X tapped two one white and black inkling creature tokens with flying, where X is the number of counters it had on it. Here is where flavor tends to stand out a little bit when the decision process of making this swap with the Lenda going in and Felisa coming out, we're sticking more closely to our vampire theme by making the tokens created by Alenda vampires to replace the tokens made by Felisa which are Inklings. They both fly, but with Alenda having the ability to get bigger and bigger and bigger, which, let's face it, could make even more tokens at a reduced mana value, Alenda is just overall better in this deck than Felisa and at a reduced savings of 25% of our mana. All right, we've reached the two-thirds way of this video. The fifth card going into our Edgar deck. It is, ah, uh, yes, here it is, our Vampire Cleric. We have a Clavelino, First of the Blessed. We have a 2-2 two -two Vampire Cleric for one in Orzhov colors. And whenever we attack, target attacking Vampire that is not a demon becomes a demon in addition to its other types. It gains, when this creature dies, draw a card and create a tapped 4-3 white and black vampire demon creature token with flying. Note that we can choose the attacking creature to be one of our Edgar Markov created vampire tokens. It does not designate non-token creature when targeting um, an attacking creature with Clavelino's attack trigger. Plus we're going to get a card when it dies and then we replace the creature with a 4-3 vampire demon still on flavor with flying. Clavelino is a slam dunk inclusion into any Edgar Markov deck, and it is going to be such an enormous benefit to have that on our side of the battlefield. With Clavelino going in and all of its litany of powerful abilities, we are going to take out Plum the Forbidden. Here we included this instant card for one on one black mana to draw a card and, and lose one life. But as an additional cost to cast the spell, we were able to sacrifice one or more creatures, and when we did, we copied the spell for each creature sacrificed this way. So here we had the ability to burst card draw by sacrificing some creatures at instant speed, whereas with Clavelino, we get to get card draw throughout the game, in addition to replacing the creatures that are dying, remember we have many, many sacrifice outlets, and then creating four, three flying vampire demons that are still on flavor. Replacing this card, of them, even though the mana value was a bit more with Clavelino, we're paying one more mana, but we're going to get a lot more use out of it, and it's going to help out the team immensely. So Clavelino in, Plum the Forbidden out. And our last card going into this Edgar Markov vampire build, 
Card number six, it is, ah, uh, yes, it is Carmen Cruel Sky Marcher. Now, here we're upping the mana value here. We have three in Orzhov colors for a 2-2 vampire soldier with flying. Whenever a player sacrifices a permanent, we put a plus one, plus one counter on Carmen, and we gain one life. So there's our plus one, plus one counter theme. There's our life gain theme, and plus note that's whenever any player sacrifices a permanent, and not just us. And whenever Carmen attacks, we return up to one target permanent card with mana value less than or equal to Carmen's power from our graveyard to the battlefield. Note that our fetch lands and any lands that might be in our graveyard can be put onto the battlefield because they have mana values of zero. Carmen is going to help us with, with uh, graveyard recursion and life gain. With that five drop going in, coming out is going to be the dominating vampire. Now we're we're upping the mana here from three to five, but here is the reason why. With dominating vampire, when it comes into play, we gain control of target creature with mana value less than or equal to the number of vampires we control until end of turn. We get to untap that creature and it has haste. So this solitary ETB trigger helps with dominating vampire, However, Carmen allows us to continuously bring cards from our graveyard as long as we have permanents with mana values less than Carmen's power. And with this type of build, Carmen could have an exceedingly high power, which allows us to bring numerous permanents from the graveyard right onto the battlefield. So we are replacing the dominating vampires one time ETB trigger with Carmen's multiple use attack trigger all right there you have it mtgbc we have updated and upgraded our edgar markov vampire tribal edh deck let me know your thoughts of these changes in the comment section below this is mtg burgeoning a yo channel for all things magic